Hey guys, Doug here from Motion Raceworks back with another Tech Tip Tuesday and today we're giving the Gen 5 LT crowd some love. This engine's becoming increasingly popular. There's a lot of cars on the road with it, you know, between trucks and Camaros and Corvettes and CTSVs and everything. The whole reason why we built our Gen 5 LT Nova was to kind of figure all this stuff out and come up with these tech tips and help you guys and then obviously come up with parts as well. One of the things that I've noticed and or learned along the way, it's kind of a black magic type of situation, is the fuel system. Very confusing. For a lot of us, it's the first time we've worked with a high pressure uh, mechanical fuel pump that's driven for DI off the engine. Uh, we're all used to having, you know, just electric pumps in the back. So the way an LT works, if you don't have an LT and you're just watching this video, is there's a low pressure pump, which is essentially the same as uh, you would have on an LS car in the tank. So a 340, uh, 4303, even a five gallon a minute brushless pump, any of that stuff, 255s, 450s, you can use those in a swap as your low pressure pump. To a diminishing return, getting more fuel up to the engine can actually help you get more fuel and horsepower out of the mechanical side. So a lot of people think they need to instantly jump to a mechanical pump. Not necessarily the case if you get fuel up you know, to that pump and have more ability to feed it, you can definitely uh, pull more horsepower out of that system without having to upgrade the pump. If you're familiar with the mechanical pumps, they're very expensive. There's not a whole lot of options out there, especially aftermarket. But again, there's a diminishing return on that. You can't just jam tons of fuel up there. It's only looking for so much. Kind of the same way that you uh, can pull more power out of a regular pump by giving it like a number 12 feed versus number eight. If it has more fuel on demand that it's waiting for to be able to push. It's better than starving that suction line. So that's essentially what's going on there. Um, with that being said, the factory puts this handy dandy um, hard slash flex line on this. So from the factory, the mechanical pump sits right here, which is right here. And if you look down in here, uh, Chad, there's actually a, a bore that looks like a lifter bore, like an oversized lifter bore. And that's right, driven off of the camshaft. So all of your fuel, your high pressure fuel pumps here. So basically they need to get that, that fuel line connection out to the side right here um, so that they can run it to the back of the car because you don't want to have to take the intake on and off to disconnect the fuel line. So being the factory and only having in mind making the rated amount of horsepower in the system that uh, has created a limitation. If you look at this line, it's actually, it looks normal on the outside, um, but there's a few spots inside of it that are neck down and depending on what model of the LT motor you get, some of the bores are actually smaller inside here, which is an extreme limitation. And then as well, um, the flexible sections, I've heard of them collapsing and basically closing up and not allowing fuel. Garrett Cletus McFarlane, he had that issue with his white Corvette and uh, he actually was the one that filled me in on this, which kind of brought up the Tech Tip Tuesday because when I've built my LT stuff, I didn't want to put that on at all. So what I wanted to show you guys today is you can actually just do away with that altogether and put a bigger line right up to the pump so you have no restrictions and you can pretty much max everything out. Thankfully, GM, when they built it, they didn't uh, use any special connections. The LS uses these same style connections. So basically we can create a secondary line that comes out the side of the intake. And you can actually see that's quite a bit larger on the ID without taking into account the bends and the places where it's gonna actually collapse inside of there. Uh, so that's quite a bit larger bore, so that's gonna flow more fuel. So this connection mimics this, and then the connection that goes to the pump, we can just use these standard quick style connect fittings like we've used on LS rails uh, forever. I'll go ahead and put the, the part numbers and the listings in the description below. This basically will just slide over this. The mechanical fuel pump has this same style connection, so there's O-rings built into this, so this will slide over this, um, and then you just simply screw this on here, and that basically retains it. So now, from the mechanical pump, if you have this fitting and this fitting, you can create an AN line to come out the side of the intake. So you have A, no restrictions, B, you don't have to buy this goofy line because it's not free, especially if you're doing a swap. This will give you the ability to increase line size on a factory car that had this, or if you're doing a swap, just don't ever, don't ever put this on at all. You can just do this the right way from the get-go. You know, all you're gonna have is a female to female AN line um, that goes between the two. In uh, summary, 
if you get one of these fittings that will go right on a pump and convert it to 6AN male, um, as you can see. And then this side will go back to your factory uh, line on your car. If you don't have a factory line, like you don't have a factory Camaro or Corvette and you're doing a swap, you can do away with this completely. But then all that you need between the two are, is a line with two hose ends on it. And the other cool thing is this gives you the ability to move your connection. With this one, your connection is, literally sits right here. So if you have nice valve covers, it's kind of ugly and gets in the way. So if you um, switch over to a flex line, you can run that connection to wherever, clean up the engine bay and uh, have things look a lot nicer, which on a swap, you definitely want to look at doing. Um, and on a factory car, it just gives you a little bit of, uh, if you're running a new line, you can also do that. So in the end of the day, doing this is gonna take out a area where it's gonna be a horsepower limitation, possibly prevent future headaches if in case that line collapsed. So I hope this helped you guys. This LT motor is definitely not rocket science. Outside of the tuning, it's uh, pretty simple really when you dig into it. So I hope that helped you guys. If you have any other Gen 5 LT questions, definitely drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. Maybe we'll do another Tech Tip Tuesday on Gen 5 stuff if we get enough. Um, request. Until next time, don't forget to hit that subscribe, like button, and uh, tell us what you think. We'll see you next time.